In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this advanced oil painting effect in Adobe Photoshop. So last week I showed you a really easy and simple technique. This is just as easy, but I think this is a process that gives you a little bit of a different result. So I want to show you this as well. So this is a before. It's just a normal still life picture. And then this is the after once we've applied the effects to it. So I'm going to reset the image back to the beginning and walk you through the steps. So the first thing we want to do is come up to Image Adjustments and then Shadow and Highlights. And by default, you'll get 35%. You can brighten this a little bit more if you need to, but this is just to create a bit of a flat image for us to work from. So once you've done that, just press OK. Then we want to come to our Layers panel and just click on the New Layer icon down there. And then we want to come over to our Art History brush tool which is this one here so if you come up to the top here you'll be able to pick a brush now I've put a link in the description for these brushes here that I'm using these are all different types of uh, oil painting effect brushes and you can select which one you prefer I'm going to go with the first one so when you should once you downloaded these all you need to do is just double click on the icon and it will load up into your brushes at the top here okay so you'll just need to scroll down these might be closed some of these folders if you see the folder like this then you just click on it and the brushes will appear there so once you've done that if you come to the top you've got a few different options here click the opacity make sure that that is on 100 and if we come down to style you've got a few different styles that you can choose from there's about 10 there you can play around and uh, see which one you prefer I'm going to stick to dab for this one and I'm going to leave the area at 20 pixels and tolerance at zero. From here, come up to window and then go to brush settings and we want to select brush tip shape and make sure that the spacing is at 25%. And then come to shape dynamics and make sure that the angle jitter is at 25%. And you'll see what that does to the brush down there it just gives us a better spread of paint once you've done that you can close this brush menu down and we're left with the brush so you can use the bracket keys to make the brush bigger and smaller so the trick here is to keep changing the size of your brush now the bigger it is the more smudge you're going to have it is a best way to put it when you select a smaller brush, then you're gonna still retain a lot of detail. So what I like to do is start off with quite a small brush and I'm just clicking and I'm constantly changing the size of that brush, making it smaller, making it bigger, just to get different variations. And I'm also changing the way that I dab this so I can create long strokes by clicking and then dragging or I can click really quickly. And again, I'm gonna get different effects there. So the trick here is just to take your time and play with the different strokes, play with different sizes, and that's gonna give you a more realistic finish. Because if you just go and paint over all of it, it's gonna look a little bit of a mess. So take your time with it. And once we get a little bit further into the edit we can then start using bigger strokes because of the areas like the background don't really need to have that much detail so we can create bigger strokes and uh, and, and finish the picture off a lot quicker so you'll notice as well that every time that I brush you can see the shape of that brush is changing so it's the actual angle and that's what that jitter does so it's so we've softened out the the edges of the brush but what we've also done is is uh, change the angle of the brush so every time we click there's a different angle so that's going to stop repeat patterns and that's going to give us a really realistic paint effect so i'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger as we get down to here because i'm not too worried about the detail that's in these sort of parts of the leaf there so let's make this a little bit bigger we go and you can see the difference of what that does straight away it's a lot bigger and it's a lot less detail so if you want to add detail back in after then you can you can go back with a smaller brush so if I make this brush smaller I can come in and this will start bringing out some of the detail into the areas that I might have uh, smudged too much or painted over too much so let's just speed this up a bit so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger 
just to show you as well, you can see the difference there. This has got a lot more detail. Okay, so let's carry on up here. And you, obviously you're going to have all the time in the world to do this, so you can take your time. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller again. There we go, I think that's okay. And I think as well the edges is quite important, how you come into the edges to so just change your angle with the way that your brush strokes are. So come down across, just cover all angles and it gives you a really, really nice sort of uniform effect then. Okay, let's do the vase and the flower down here. So I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger because I'm not too worried about the detail on that vase. This I want to keep some detail in. so make it a little bit smaller just bring back some of this detail around here there we go so we're not actually destroying the picture because we're only doing this on the layer we're only painting over the layer and it's using the the colors underneath to give us this effect so we're not actually destroying the picture which is good so let's make the brush bigger then and you'll see what I mean you can see there look I'll make this bigger the detail is lost so I'm just doing this just for speed you can take your time and uh, choose smaller brush strokes if you want to and again you can get different effects with the style at the top here so have a play with that as well so let's just make the brush smaller and then come into the edges here just to get a better blend here we go and let's just finish off up here and so what we're going to do after this we're going to add a little bit of dimension to the actual brush strokes to make it look a little bit more 3d because at the minute these brush strokes are a little bit flat so we're going to just solve that issue in a second so once you're done and once you're happy there we go i think i'm happy with that now it's going to paint around here there we go so yeah once you're happy and you've got the the kind of texture that you want and the detail that you want again it's just about changing that brush stroke so yeah that's cool so now we can now we can uh, do some other bits and bobs to it just to enhance it so I'm just going to come down here a little bit there we go that's better perfect okay so what we want to do is make a copy of our layer so press control command J and then we want to remove the color, so press Control, Command, Shift, and U, and that will just desaturate that color. You can see there's some color in the background there, but that's fine. And then we want to convert this to a smart object. So come over to the layer here, right click, and then just select Convert to Smart Object. And then what we want to do is go into Image, Adjustments, and Shadow and Highlight again. We've got 35% as default. I'm going to drop that down a little bit to 20%, depending on your image. Again, it's just to give us a little bit more contrast. So press OK to that. And then come over to Filter, Stylize, and then Emboss. Um, we want to make sure that the angle is at 140 degrees, height of 2, and amount 200%. Press OK to that. And then we want to come up to the Blend Mode and change that to Linear Light. So once you've done that, you can see on the image now we've created a little bit more texture to them stroke patterns. So you can see, if I take the before and after off, it's just added a little bit more texture to the image. Okay, so we can now come and make some small adjustments. So let's come down to the bottom here, come to the hue and saturation, and let's just push the saturation up a little bit. And then let's come down and let's add some vibrance. And we can also add some more saturation if we want to there. And if you want to as well, you can come down and you can change the color balance. So if you want to play around and, and get some different colors in your picture, so you might want to add some more yellow in there. You might want to add a little bit more green or some more magenta. You can change from midtones to highlights as well. So we can put some more, more yellow in there. And let's just play around until we get a nice color. So we're trying to get a Monet style. There we go. So that is how you do it. That's how you get this advanced 
oil painting effect. So if we look at the history, I'm just going to take a snapshot and show you the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. So I hope you've enjoyed that. You can use this on any type of portraits, animals, people, still life, architecture, you name it, you can do it. And you can see here, here's a different one that I've done, just changing the color balance and uh, changing different brush stroke sizes. You can see, again, you get a different effect depending on what size brush strokes you use. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. Take care and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.